Start of Chapter 4 New Testament also confirms Baptist contradicts Jesus In New Testament times, we find that the Jews were still expecting the fulfillment of the prophecy of one like Moses. Refer John chapter 1 verses 19 to 25. When Jesus claimed to be the Messiah of the Jews, the Jews began to inquire as to where was Isaiah. The Jews had a parallel prophecy that before the coming of the Messiah, Elias must come first in his second coming. Jesus confirms this Jewish belief. Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 17, verses 11 to 13. According to the New Testament, the Jews were not the ones to swallow the words of any would-be Messiah. In their investigations, they went under intense difficulties in order to find their true Messiah. And this the Gospel of John confirms. And this is the record of John, the Baptist, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. This was only natural because there can't be two messiahs at the same time. If Jesus was the Christ, then John couldn't be the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Here John the Baptist contradicts Jesus. Jesus says that John is Elias, and John denies that he is what Jesus ascribes him to be. One of the two, Jesus or John, God forbid, is definitely not speaking the truth. On the testimony of Jesus himself, John the Baptist was the greatest of the Israelite prophets. Verily I say unto you, among that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. We Muslims know John the Baptist as Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam. We revere him as a true prophet of Allah. The Holy Prophet Jesus, known to us as Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, is also esteemed as one of the mightiest messengers of the Almighty. How can we Muslims impute lies to either of them? We leave this problem between Jesus and John for the Christians to solve, for their sacred scriptures abound in discrepancies which they have been glossing over as the dark sayings of Jesus. We Muslims are really interested in the last question posed to John the Baptist by the Jewish elite. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Holy Bible, John chapter 1, verse 21. Three questions. Please note that three different and distinct questions were posed to John the Baptist and to which he gave three emphatic no's as answers to recapitulate. 1. Art thou the Christ? 2. Art thou Elias? 3. Art thou that prophet? But the learned men of Christendom somehow only see two questions implied here. To make doubly clear that the Jews definitely had three separate prophecies in their minds when they were interrogating John the Baptist, let us read the remonstrance of the Jews in the verses following. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be, A, not that Christ, B, nor Elias, C, neither that prophet? Holy Bible, John, chapter 1, verse 25. The Jews were waiting for the fulfillment of three distinct prophecies. One, the coming of Christ, two, the coming of Elias, and three, the coming of that prophet. That prophet. If we look up any Bible which has a concordance or cross-references, then we will find in the marginal note where the words the prophet or that prophet occur in John 1.25, that these words refer to the prophecy of Deuteronomy 18.15 and 18 and that that prophet, the prophet like Moses, like unto thee, we have proved through overwhelming evidence that he was Muhammad 
and not Jesus. We Muslims are not denying that Jesus was the Messiah, which word is translated as Christ. We are not contesting the thousand and one prophecies which the Christians claim abound in the Old Testament for telling the coming of the Messiah. What we say is that Deuteronomy 18.18 18 does not refer to Jesus Christ, but it is an explicit prophecy about the Holy Prophet Muhammad The Domini very politely parted with me by saying that it was a very interesting discussion and he would like me very much to come one day and address his congregation on the subject. A decade and a half has passed since then, but I am still awaiting that privilege. I believe the Domini was sincere when he made the offer, but prejudices die hard, and who would like to lose his sheep? The Acid Test To the lambs of Christ I say, why not apply that acid test which the Master himself wanted you to apply to any would-be claimant to prophethood? He had said, By their fruits ye shall know them. Do men gather grapes from the thorns or figs from the thistles? Every good tree will bear good fruit, and every evil tree will bear evil fruit. By their fruits ye shall know them. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 7, verses 16 to 20. Why are you afraid to apply this test to the teachings of Muhammad? You will find in the last testament of God, the Holy Quran, the true fulfillment of the teachings of Moses and Jesus which will bring to the world the much needed peace and happiness. If a man like Muhammad were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems that would bring it the much needed peace and happiness. George Bernard Shaw the Greatest The weekly news magazine, Time, dated July 15, 1974, carried a selection of opinions by various historians, writers, military men, businessmen and others on the subject, who were history's great leaders. Some said that it was Hitler, others said Gandhi, Buddha, Tinkeln and the like. But Jules Messerman a United States psychoanalyst put the standards straight by giving the correct criteria wherewith to judge. Leaders must fulfill three functions. 1. Provide for the well-being of the led. 2. Provide a social organization in which people feel relatively secure. And 3. Provide them with one set of beliefs. With the above three criteria, he searches history and analyzes Hitler, Pasteur, Caesar, Moses, Confucius and the lot and ultimately concludes People like Pasteur and Salk are leaders in the first sense. People like Gandhi and Confucius on one hand and Alexander, Caesar and Hitler on the other are leaders in the second and perhaps the third sense. Jesus and Buddha belong in the third category alone. Perhaps the greatest leader of all times was Muhammad, who combined all three functions. To a lesser degree, Moses did the same. According to the objective standards set by the professor of the Chicago University, whom I believe to be Jewish, Jesus and Buddha are nowhere in the picture of the great leaders of mankind. But by a queer coincidence, groups Moses and Muhammad together thus adding further weight to the argument that Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. Deuteronomy 18.18 18, Like unto thee, like Moses. Rev. James L. Dow in Collins' Dictionary of the Bible gives further proof that Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. As a statesman and lawgiver, Moses is the creator of the Jewish people. He found a loose conglomeration of Semitic people. None of the only man of history who can be compared even remotely to him is Muhammad. Rev. James L. Dow In conclusion, I end with a quotation of a Christian reverend, the commentator of the Bible, followed by that of his master. The ultimate criteria of a true prophet is the moral character of his teachings. Professor Demelo by their fruits ye shall know them, Jesus Christ.
Come, let us reason together. Say, O people of the book, come to common terms as between us and you, that we worship none but God, that we associate no partners with Him, that we erect not from among ourselves lords and patrons other than God. If then they turn back, say, bear witness that we at least are Muslims, bowing to God's will. Surah Ali Imran, Chapter 3, Verse 64 People of the Book is the respectful title given to the Jews and the Christians in the Holy Quran. The Muslim is here commanded to invite, O people of the Book, O learned people, O people who claim to be the recipients of divine revelation of a holy scripture, let us gather together into a common platform that we worship not but God, because none but God is worthy of worship, not because the Lord thy God is a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5 But because he is our Lord and cherisher, our sustainer and evolver, worthy of all praise, prayer and devotion. In the abstract, the Jews and the Christians would agree to all the three propositions contained in this Quranic verse. In practice, they fail. Apart from doctrinal lapses from the unity of the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is the question of a consecrated priesthood. Among the Jews it was hereditary also, as if a mere human being, Kohen or Pope or priest or Brahman, could claim superiority apart from his learning and the purity of his life, or could stand between man and God in some special sense. Islam does not recognize priesthood. The creed of Islam is given to us in here in a nutshell. Say ye, we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us and to Abraham, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob and the tribes and that given to Moses and Jesus and that given to all prophets from their Lord. We make no difference between one and another of them and we bow to Allah in Islam. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 136. The Muslim position is clear. The Muslim does not claim to have a religion peculiar to himself. Islam is not a sect or an ethnic religion. In its view, all religions are one, for the truth is one. It was the same religion preached by all the earlier prophets. Holy Quran, chapter 42, verse 13. It was the truth taught by all the inspired books. In essence, it amounts to a consciousness of the will and plan of God and a joyful submission to that will and plan. If anyone wants a religion other than that, he is false to his own nature, as he is false to God's will and plan. Such a one cannot expect guidance, for he has deliberately renounced guidance. End of chapter 4 and of part one.